Its Panda aims at being all the car some buyers will ever need. It's large where it matters, yet still small enough for its urban purpose. It's more efficient, especially in its latest 1 litre mild hybrid form, and very manoeuvrable. It can even head off road in 4x4 form. You can make it trendy, or specify one that's super affordable. Italians have always done this kind of thing very well. They still do. Almost every car you can think of on the market can be pigeonholed into a specific market segment. And even if it can't be, it's likely to appeal to a very specific group of customers. In many ways, the Fiat Panda's different. And here, with this latest mild hybrid version, we're going to find out why. Although sized and priced as a little city car, it's so versatile and classless that it can really function as, well, almost anything you like. Uh, depending on the flavour you choose, it's a design as suited to city living as it is to the needs of a mountaintop farmer. It can be eco-conscious transport for friends of the earth, perhaps a second vehicle for older empty nesters, or the sole car for a rural family. Less a city car and more an essential car. It is, in the words of one top Fiat executive, the official car for doing whatever the hell you like. This is the Italian brand at its very best. A modern era Mark II Panda design was launched back in 2003 to replace a first generation model that sold for over 20 years from 1980. The Mark III design we have here was originally launched back in 2011, but in early 2020 it was significantly updated with the option of one litre mild hybrid power. And it's this improved Panda that we're going to take a look at here. Functional, solid, intelligent and free-spirited. It's still, we're told, a car that thinks outside the box. Let's try it. The Panda's exterior packaging couldn't be more different to that of the Fiat 500 showroom stablemate, but as ever, the engineering is exactly the same, including the provision of the mild hybrid one litre petrol engine we're trying here. Now at the time of this test, in autumn 2020, older power plants did still feature in the range, but going forward, it's this electrified three-cylinder unit that the Italian brand plans to concentrate on for Panda buyers. It features the 12-volt belt starter generator, known as the BSG, along with an 11 amp hour lithium-ion battery. The belt starter generator harvests energy during braking and deceleration and stores it in the system's little integrated battery so it can be used in one of two ways, either to aid acceleration or to power the car's auxiliaries as the engine stop-start system activates when you're waiting at the lights or in a traffic queue. Uh, there will never be enough charge generated to power the car without the aid of the combustion unit and even if there was, the battery just isn't big enough to store it. What this is then is less a hybrid power plant and more of an embellishment to combustion engineering which boosts efficiency by up to 30% in CO2 emissions according to Fiat. Uh, that brings us to the WLTP rated figures, 50.4 mpg on the combined cycle and up to 126 grams per kilometre of CO2. This electrified power plant was first launched with Panda Cross models like the one we're trying here, then extended out to variants of the standard shape model, gradually replacing the older 1.2 litre, 69 horsepower, four cylinder petrol unit. A third engine, the 0.9 litre, two cylinder petrol twin air turbo power plant with 85 horsepower, that's used on the pair of all wheel drive variants that feature at the top of the range, the Panda 4x4 and the surprisingly capable Panda Cross 4x4. Whatever Panda variant you decide on, on the move you'll find that a few things rather betray the age of this design, notably the ride, the steering feel and the shift quality of the manual gearbox that now has six speeds. But loyal Panda customers tend to forgive this car much for its friendly looks, spacious cabin, its cheeky engine note and its turn on a sixpence manoeuvrability. There's a super tight 9.1 metre turning circle. And parking is simple thanks to the square glassy body. In many ways, the Panda has been one of the most influential car designs we've seen this century. The Mark II version of 2003 redefined just how versatile a small car could be, and those were qualities usefully evolved by this third-generation car eight years later. 
Today, customers tend to want their small runabouts with trendier packaging, which is why an increasing number of Panda buyers want this more fashionably presented cross version with its SUV style front spot lamps and its more prominent under bumper sections. Whatever form of Panda meets your fancy, it'll come with what Fiat hopes is a friendly look, and that's based on what the Italian brand's designers call a squarical theme. Rounded rectangles in vogue everywhere, from the headlamps to the front air intake, uh, from the wheel arches to that trademark extra third rearward side window. There is something of a feeling of a tiny MPV about this model, something that was carried over from the old second generation version, Let's take a look inside. At the wheel, it's all very functional and very noughties. This must be one of the very last new cars on sale without any sort of center dash infotainment screen. To some extent, though, you can forgive the Panda that because its design still feels a little quirky and fun. Now, those squarical touches we mentioned earlier continue on in the cabin. You see them absolutely everywhere. And the dashboard is enveloped in a colorful frame of your choosing with a roomy storage pocket right in front of the front passenger, supposed to evoke a nod towards original 80s Panda motoring. Uh, there's plenty of space here to put things too. Fiat says there are actually 14 different receptacles of various kinds scattered around the cabin. And in the back, well, thanks to the slim seats, rear seat passenger space is perfectly adequate for a couple of fully sized adults. It really feels old school to find wind up windows back here, but there's plenty on the plus side. The low glassy waistline means that kids will be better able to see out and may, as a result, be less likely to be car sick. Plus, the central transmission tunnel is notably low, so if you absolutely had to fit three adults back here, you absolutely could. All of them would have enough ceiling space too to wear elaborate headgear should a wedding visit be on the agenda. Bear in mind that if you do want the option to seat three people back here, you'll have to pay extra for a third centre seat belt with the standard shape model. Uh, this cross variant though gets that as standard. Let's finish with a look in the boot. Lift this light tailgate and you'll find that this trunk area is a reasonable 225 litres in size. Uh, fold the rear bench down and you'll free up 870 litres of space. Loved by small car people the world over for more than 30 years, the Panda continues to define everything that a very compact, multi-purpose model should be. A few other rivals may be a little cheaper, more refined or slightly trendier, but we still think that few push the boundaries of design quite like this Fiat. It happily challenges just about every tiny car perception in the book that you can't get really impressive fuel and CO2 figures without forking out loads for a diesel, uh, that you can't seat five in this class of car or carry really large items or head for the hills in a city car. Panda people think differently thanks to a car that lets them do just that. It has got tough competition these days, no question, but in a growing segment full of talented offerings, it's a key contender that you just can't help liking.